God bless you, my friends. This is your host evangelist, James Spike, with the Victorious Faith Broadcast. Today, we're starting a new series, Are You a Priest of God? Are You a Priest of God? Yes, if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 as we get into our subject here today. And I want you to remember this, that whatever your problem is, Jesus is the answer. All right, today is a great day to receive a miracle from the Lord. Our verse of scripture is coming from verse Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a particular people that should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. God's word today. <clears throat> all right. First of all, we want you to know that God has chose you. You didn't choose God. Amen. He chose you. You're a chosen generation. You're part of a particular family. God has adopted you to be a child of God and when we go to heaven, you're going to rule and reign in the royal family. You see the part where it says a royal priesthood? We are as Jesus will be because we're in the family. We're going to be part of the royalty of the first family, if you would, God. Amen. Because God existed by himself. So he has adopted us to rule and reign with him forever. When you become a child of God, you have really gained uh, insight into what will be and which what really is. This world was created by the word of God. Is materialistic things that we're looking at today all are going to dissolve. They're going to be they're going to go away. But the word of God in the world that God lives in is going to be forever. Now, the earth will remain according to the Bible, but the earth is going to be renovated. It's going to be made over, and it's going to be a part of God's kingdom because he's going to redo it since the fall of Adam and Eve. And we're going to be part of that. I don't want to go too much into uh, things that shall be because the question that I want to answer here today, are you a priest of God? Are you a priest of God? Now, when we look into the Hebrew, the word priest identifies a chief rule, ruler and official. You have to remember during that time, that the government that God had set up uh, during that time all had to fall around a man of God like Moses. Moses, and then he created a government which were people that were anointed with a godly spirit in order to administer over the people. And then you see the government going through a lot of changes to where they adopted some of the ways of the hedonistic people around him. For example, uh, Saul was the first king of Israel. And then the bad thing about it is that Samuel, he came to the Lord and he said, the people want a king. And the Lord said, give them a king. And then that's how that started. But prior to that, the people were underneath the rule and the administration of godly people. But as they ventured farther away from God, they despised this rule because it always bring, brought them into judgment because their deeds were evil. So they felt like if they adopted a king, they could have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof and just they would not be under that strict judgment. So that's what we look 
at in the Old Testament. Now, the word in the Greek, uh, Harris, it means chief priest. Uh, it's an official also. Now, the duties of a priest is a person that officiates over worship, leading people into confession of their sins. A priest brings people into the presence of God, and as you come into the presence of God, there needs to be an humbleness and an obedience to recognize flaws. Amen? Now, in the Old Testament, the priests used to receive the animal sacrifices that God required because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There's no remission of sin. All right, so the priests in the Old Testament used to receive the sacrifice, and it had to be pure. The sacrifice had to be pure. So when they received it and it was pure, God saw the sacrifice that the individual brought to the peace, the priest, and they confessed their sins, and their sins were atoned for for another year or until they did something where they felt like they needed to come again. However, when Jesus came, Jesus was the Lamb of God. And as the Lamb of God, he sacrificed himself one time for sin. And he was on the cross. And he died. When he died, he took the blood that was shed, if you would, on the altar at the cross, there on earth, took it back to the heavenly altar that was up in the sky and offered his blood, his sacrifice of his life to the Father, and the Father approved for us to be forgiven. Can you say amen? This is how we receive our forgiveness. And our sins only had to be forgiven once because his forgiveness is eternal. When Jesus forgives, he forgives our past, he forgives our future, and he forgives our present sin. We are forgiven. And that's how we become a chosen generation to receive this type of forgiveness. The Old Testament people did not receive this type of forgiveness. And those that will come after the Holy Spirit has lifted off the earth, they will not receive this type of forgiveness, but you shall receive it because you are part of a chosen generation. And amen should go right there. So we have an everlasting priesthood, my friend. Our priesthood is everlasting because we have received something that no one else in other ages have received before Christ. That's right. So we have eternal life that's within us. We are ministers of the gospel, and we are able to officiate and to usher in the presence of God and we're also able to pray with people to receive salvation. The same salvation that we have received, they can receive. And not only that, Jesus, he said to the 120 on the day of Pentecost, it's good for you that I go away. He was talking about after the resurrection because when I go, I'm going to send back the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be in you and with you. Amen. The Holy Spirit is in us and with us. And then he, go, he went on to say that, listen, these signs shall follow you. Lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Can you say amen? If you, if you speak and the people believe and they're baptized, they shall be saved. So you see that we are part of a royal priesthood of believers. You have power that's been given to you by God. 
and we are able to lead people into worship. That's why the Bible says, wherever well, two or three are gathered together in his name, he said he's there in the midst. We have to be gathered together in the name of Jesus. When we're at church, a lot of people are gathered in their name or they're gathered in the name of their denomination. But if we would just gather in the name of Jesus and we would just confess our sins and come to God with our hands uplifted in worship, and we had a few people to lead us in, the Spirit of the Lord would come into our services. And he, amen, would do miracles. Do you need a miracle today? I want you to remember that you are a priest. Right where you are, even if you're by yourself, you can usher in the presence of God. And he will come in and he will heal your body even right now. I'm feeling a heavy anointing right now and that God wants to be a part of your life. Amen. Listen, I want you to stop what you're doing right now and I want you to confess your sins. I want you to remember what Jesus did in his sacrifice. It was perfect. And just believe on him. If you're not saved right now, Jesus loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That's enough power to save you. The Bible says that if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Can't you believe in him today, amen, it's your time. It's your time to come into the presence of God and become part of this chosen generation that we're talking about. And those of you all that are sick in your body, <clears throat> I want to pray the prayer of faith with you today. I want to pray that prayer as God's minister standing in his stead, in his name, I want to declare God's healing power to come upon you. <clears throat> Wherever you are afflicted in your body or if you're hurting all over, you can just touch your forehead as we pray the prayer of faith in the name of Jesus. And we're going to demand evil spirits, sickness, and diseases to leave your body. All right, my friend, let's approach God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your miracle working power and your covenant that you have made with man. And God, you have given us your name and the power and the authority in your name all the way from heaven. And you said, Lord, that whatsoever we shall loose on earth, you said it shall be loosed in heaven. And Lord, right now, we just loose the healing power of Jesus Christ upon this person that's believing and standing in faith that their body shall be healed, that they shall not be oppressed by demonic spirits, and that all diseases shall leave over their body. God, we thank you right now for the power of God which is coming alive in their body even right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of Nazareth, loose this person right now from bondage. That's it, my friends. Oh, I feel the presence of God. I tell you what, Jesus is somebody. And I want you to remember this, that whatever your problem is, that Jesus is the answer. All right, my friend, we thank you for listening uh, to our broadcast today. And we want to know what the Lord has done for you. So if you would contact me on Facebook at James Spike Ministries and just testify for how the Lord is healed or how he saved you. And we'll get you information back that will be uh, beneficial to you. Now, also on our website, we want you to be a member of our blog so you can be updated on all our sermons and all the printed materials that we have. Well, that's it for today. We thank you for listening. 
And just remember that today is a great day for a miracle.